you're one of the only people who knows what it's like to be an innocent man on death row, but everybody else thinks you're guilty. Yeah. I mean, what, uh, what did that feel like to it you? Was... I mean, when you had those two days left, you know, trying to put, we're trying to put ourselves in the mind of Todd, of Ty, what he was going through. What, what were you going through? Well, like, like I said, you know, it's, uh, I had uh, prepared myself for it because I know on Texas death row, you know, very few people ever, ever get off of Texas death row alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had myself prepared pretty well for if that time come, I would, I would, uh, you know, I would just uh, lay down and go to sleep and that would be it. I wouldn't make a big deal out of it. I wouldn't be hollering and screaming and, and uh, I don't really know what my last words would be. Uh, I don't know whether I would uh, would have said, "Well, you're killing an innocent man," or, or, or what, you know. But uh, I can only imagine what Todd Willingham was going through because you know I, I come within two days of execution myself, but. Uh, to be strapped down on that gurney, uh, it's hard to say what a person would say. You know, I know that I wouldn't be rambunctious and yelling and all that because I prepared myself for that. But at the same time, it it would be really uh, really tough. You know, because you spend all these years knowing that you're innocent, and that's the hard part about being in there. If I would have been guilty of this crime, uh, I could have took it real easy. I mean, it wouldn't have bothered me like it did. And uh, Todd's case was so similar to mine, and uh, I didn't know Todd really well, but I had talked to him several times out on the wreck yard, and and we discussed a little bit about our cases, and and uh, found out that you know they was nearly identical. And uh, I believe in my heart and soul that he was an innocent man. And I believe Texas killed an innocent man. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the thing of it is, I, I could have been in the same, same position he was in, but I had the, the New York attorneys and, and had the capital to, to do all of that, you know. Uh, and all he had was his uh, appointed attorneys, and and they don't get enough money to, you know, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to uh, bring forth what it takes. You know, uh, he it if if he could have hung on just three or four or five more months. He'd have been in the same shape I was. He would walk out of there a free man because the, he had the same evidence I had. Everything was, there was very little, you know, and uh, of course the prosecutors, they make us look like animals and all this stuff. And uh, I've been out five years now and uh, I've had no problems. I've, uh, I started my own business. Uh, uh, I retired uh, about two years ago, and uh, I think I've been a productive person, you know, ever since I got out. I've, uh, I've helped a lot of people. With the money that I got, I was able to help my kids and, and Verlin's kids and uh, do a lot of things that, that I wanted to do. I know Governor Perry is trying to trying to sweep this under the carpet, like, hey, you know, this, uh, he was guilty as sin, you know? Well, all of us does things, and they call him a monster and everything. They called me a monster. That's the way district attorneys do. Uh, they're exempt from prosecution. Uh, the only way that the death penalty can ever, ever be fair is to hold these uh, district attorneys liable for the things they do. They drug me during my trial, uh, you know, and uh, I'm sure that the district attorney had something to do with that. I'm sure that 
you know, that he ordered the medication and uh, I was like a zombie all the way through my trial. But uh, unless you have, you know, the capital uh, and uh, they do something about these district attorneys, it'll never be that way. I mean, they can say and do whatever they want to do and they don't have to worry about lawsuits, prosecution, or anything. And that's where it needs to start. It needs to start there. It needs to uh, follow up with uh, enough money for representation. I mean, these, these lawyers, you've got a lot of good lawyers out there. They, uh, they get $25,000, $30,000 per case. Hell, you can't even, you can't even uh, hire an expert witness, uh, you know, expert for that. And uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's not a fair situation. If you have money, just, you know, that's the difference between me and Todd. I had, I had money backing me up. And uh, just think if, you know, if I hadn't had no more time than Todd Willingham had, they would have killed me before I could prove my innocence. It takes a long time. Even after you get the representation and the money to fight this thing and, and dig up the whatever it takes, you know, to prove your innocence, that's, uh, you know, I would have been in the same shape he would. I wouldn't be here today. What should Rick Perry do? What should the governor do right now? I mean, you've got this, you've got these Forensic Science Commission that's looking at this case, looking at, studied your case and Todd Willingham's case. <coughs> the experts come out said that there was no arson. We've got seven different experts saying that now. What should the governor do? I, I really think Governor Perry should uh, own up to it and say, hey, we made a mistake. You know, what uh, the Governor Perry's worried about is, is you know, they killed an innocent man on his uh, watch, you know? And he's afraid he might not get elected, and uh, he needs to own up to it. Uh, you know, uh, they know if, if they own up to it, there's a big lawsuit there. You know, they're worried about that, and he's worried about his own hide, you know, because, you know, governors are elected. And uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like Ori White, the prosecutor that, that uh, you know, he testified at my expunction hearing and, and he said, hey, you know, the man's innocent. Uh, how, many, how many district attorneys or governors do you know that's going to get up there and say that, you know? And uh, Perry needs to just own up to it and say, hey, we did, we killed an innocent man. And I think we ought to put a moratorium on it right now. Study this thing and see what we need to do to fix this. Uh, to start with, just like I said, that, you know, start with the district attorney. After you finish with the district attorney, try to, uh, try to get more money uh, for representation. You know, it's... it's the attorneys that handled my case, they worked on my case 12 years. They spent $5 million. I know the state of Texas can't produce like that, but give them enough money where, where they can hire experts and, and do a little digging and, and, and find out the, the facts on the case. You know, uh, I, I'm sure that most people on death row are guilty. But when I left death row, I could say in my heart, I, I thought there was at least five people that were innocent. And like I said, I haven't named no names or anything because I don't know how these people would feel about me bringing their situation up. And uh, that's just, uh, I, I don't know, but I think uh, Governor Perry needs to do the right thing. He needs to admit, hey, you know, we've got these seven experts. My case was identical to his. Uh, you know, he just he's just trying to let it go by. And it's, it's not going to hush up. I'm not going to hush up. People, uh, people that care about the death penalty, and the people that don't know about the, uh, the death penalty, they need to be informed. Uh, 
most people, they believe in the death penalty. They, uh, they don't really know anything about it. But once in a while, it strikes close to home. And then they realize, hey, this is really a dirty deal. You know? I mean, anybody can be walking down the street and be at the wrong place at the right time. And uh, they, can, they can put, just like on mine, everything was circumstantial evidence. The district attorney gets up there and says, this is the way we think it happened. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not the way it happened. And uh, how, can, how can a civilized country like America sentence a man to death on circumstantial, uh, uh, you know, evidence like that. There's just, uh, it's not right. Uh, Governor Perry, he needs to, he needs to step up to the plate and admit, you know, hey, we made a mistake. But, uh, you know, and this thing is not going to go away. It's not going to go away. Uh, he, he thinks that, you know, eventually, you know, it'll last a little while and then it'll go away, but we're not going to let it go away. It's not going to die down. Step up to the plate and do your job.